Field Notes, Elmwood I parked the car beside a dilapidated mulberry tree on the edge of the small town of Eagle, Nebraska. Margaret and I unload our bikes from the rack, stuff our panniers, and head out for a ride. We are biking the eight-mile stretch from Eagle to Elmwood on the Mopac Trail. The trail was once a rail line for the Missouri Pacific, hence Mopac, but has been converted into a crushed limestone walking and biking trail as part of the National Rails to Trails program. Our destination is the home of Best Streeter Aldrich. Aldrich celebrated the creation of the original 1885 Missouri Pacific Rail Line as a sign of the inevitable march of progress on the prairies and a boom to her hometown. So I wonder what she would think of its replacement by, of all things, a bike trail. It's late September. After months of hot near record dry weather, a cold front moved through overnight. It's now a cool, cloudy, misty day in the mid-fifties, a great relief from the relentless summer heat. There's enough off-and-on drizzle that we carry rain gear, but not enough that we wear it. The trail crosses farmland most of the way, but much of the route is shielded by a screen of heavy tree cover, dense shrubs, and dangling vines. Through the screen, we glimpse cornfield after cornfield, soybean field after soybean field, on and on. By now, most of the fields have been harvested, but a few still hold tall, dying, drying corn plants or the low-growing, yellowed, scraggly leaves of soybeans. At times, the screen of trees reaches high to become a tunnel as the branches of large native hackberries and cottonwoods and the introduced Siberian elms arch across the trail. It's as if we are in a tube of trees laying across the open fields. As we pedal along, I note that some of the trees appear to be wild plums, but the fruits are long gone. Likewise with the dangling native grapevines, their fruits long ago eaten by the birds. In her novel, With a Lantern in Her Hand, Aldrich describes how her pioneer family went in the wagon along the creek to scour the thickets for wild grapes and wild plums. Nice to see they still grow here, though I doubt many people these days come through to pick them. In places, treacherously spiky green briar vines reach into the treetops. Assorted sunflowers have begun to fade and droop. Milkweed pods have mostly spilled their seeds into the sky. At times, the brilliant red leaves of a cluster of sumac trees leaps out from the general greenery. Just before reaching Elmwood, we cross over Stove Creek, a sluggish flow of water idling in a deep ditch. It's curious that in her novel, Aldrich renames her hometown of Elmwood as Cedarwood, but retains the name of the creek that winds through it. We work our way along the town streets, climb a steep slope, then glide down the hill to Elmwood Park, just across from Aldrich's historic home. The park features a basketball court, a nice modern playground, and what we are looking for, some covered picnic tables. We stop, park our bikes, spread out our lunch on the table, and eat last night's leftover chicken as the drizzle increases, plinking off the metal roof of the shelter. <laughs>